we are back at my home in Indianapolis, and today I'm sitting here in my living room with Rad Drew. Uh, he's written a number of articles for Photo PXL, and I consider him one of the uh, foremost experts on iPhone photography, uh, specifically, uh, let's call it uh, in modern day terms, mobile photography, which that way we can include uh, the uh, Pixel cameras from Google, the Android cameras, and just about everything else. However, today I'm going to be very honest, we're going to be specifically talking about the new iPhone cameras, and specifically the iPhone 11 Max Pro. Or is it the 11 Pro Max? Yeah, 11. <laughs> That's how I said 11 Pro Max or something like that. Anyway, uh, it's a Pro, it's an 11, <laughs> and it's a Max, and it's got three lenses. And we're going to talk all about this camera and exactly uh, what it's done, uh, at least in, for my photography over the last four weeks or so since I've had this camera. I have uh, the green camera, and it's wrapped in this nice green silicone case so that it doesn't slip out of my hands because I'm notoriously... Uh, dropping cameras and yeah, uh, you see, have yeah, I go with the classic black however but yes I it's like a bar of soap without a case so, and I'm just uh, this is really helpful to have something to grip. Rad and I went out for a Saturday or a Sunday drive uh, we enjoy taking pictures together and Rad does an extremely great job he's very artistic and when you shoot together you get a chance to joke together and talk together and specifically talk about the phones together. On my phone I, right now I have uh, 88,600 photos and 586 videos. That's a lot of images. Many times when I'm out photographing with my uh, new Sony A7R 4 uh, on a tripod, uh, I bring out one of these, uh, this camera and basically kind of use it as a Polaroid. Sit it right where I'm seeing and shoot a shot and I can take a look at it, see if it's going to uh, work with what I'm seeing and also allows me, if I actually get a good image, to immediately do some work in Snapseed or some of the other apps and uh, post something to social media uh, about what I'm photographing. And then I can come home with the images from my Sony and uh, work on those later on. I do the same thing. I, I shoot Fuji mostly, uh, but I actually even have a, uh, a little uh, hot shoe attachment that's, that slides into my hot shoe and I mount my iPhone on top of my camera. And so I, I often shoot the same scene with my Fuji in wide angle or, or my, you know, whatever, uh, 18 to 135, and then also have a shot with the iPhone uh, that goes with it. And so if I'm out in the field, I can process things, post them, share them quickly. Um, and it's, uh, it's just, it's a lot of fun. Plus, I, I think for me, seeing the frame, you know, the, the, the larger viewfinder, if you will, of the iPhone, I think it's made me a better photographer over the years. It's, it's given me an opportunity to practice composition in ways that are different than looking through a viewfinder. With this new phone, the, the, the 11 Max, it comes with three lenses, a wide angle, a normal, and slight telephoto, for lack of better words. Uh, the angle equivalent is, I believe, around 13 millimeters for the wide angle, uh, 52 for the telephoto, and what are we looking at? Uh, you know, I can't remember now. 20, it's 20-something, 20 20 I think, yeah. Uh, I know many of my readers have said, in comments on the forum that the iPhone really isn't a camera. And it really uh, it doesn't have a place for a serious photographer and what they do and how they, they show and, and work with their photographs. And uh, I think at this point, specifically with this new phone that came out, and this is what kind of started our conversation together uh, in the car a while back, is that uh, I don't believe that's true. I believe now you know, this is a very, very capable camera doing some amazing things with some truly amazing computational photography uh, things going on behind the scenes uh, that changes a lot of things. And made my opinion, you know, camera companies like Sony and Fuji and these others are going to have to catch up with some of the technologies that these consumer cameras that we have with us all the time are offering. Yeah, I, I'd agree. I mean, I think that one of the biggest differences is the, just the hardware difference of having a smaller sensor. But as long as as long as we don't forget that and do the things that are necessary to kind of counter counteract that, if you will, um, by choosing the you know highest resolution for apps that we use and things like that, um, we can produce uh, files that allow you to um, you know print really large with integrity. Um, Plus, we now also have uh, kind of another topic here, but we have we have Topaz products uh, from Topaz Labs that are things like AI Gigapixel and Denoise AI, 
which are desktop apps, but you can take your small iPhone image and run it through AI Gigapixel and enlarge it six times and more with integrity. Um, so we've got options today for that smaller file that we didn't have a few years ago. I'm all about printing, as everybody, I hope, knows. And um, I have been able to take the images from these phones um, and print up to 17 by 22 inches without a problem. I think I did my first exhibit uh, about five years ago um, here in Indianapolis at Clues Hall, and it was uh, 100 images um, throughout this beautiful venue, and everything that was in there was, was iPhone, and some of them were larger th even than what you described, um, and they printed well with integrity. Um, and so, you know, I guess that's the other thing related to that, you know, th having the latest phone is always great and it's fun, but even if you don't have the latest phone, this technology from several phones back is still amazing. And to me, the biggest advance that we've seen in the iPhone was with the 7 Plus when they first came out with two lenses, because it let us start to do things with um, depth of field. We could create a narrow depth of field for the first time, which we couldn't do with anything but, but our DSLRs and mirrorless cameras you know, um, before that. So um, if you don't have the latest one, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Pick up a 10 or a, an 8 plus or whatever, and, and I think you'll, you'll still be satisfied. It's all about actually taking the photograph. However, I think this new 11 is just blowing me away in regards to uh, what it can do and the images that I've been able to shoot with. First off, you know, being able to quickly move between the three lenses. And you know, those are what you might call um, optical uh, lenses, meaning a wide, a normal, and a telephoto. However, on any one of these things, when you shoot with the camera, you can push this one button, and if you hold it, you get a, a dial, and you can dial in more zoom all the way up to 10x. Now at that point it becomes a digital zoom, mm -hmm. but it does allow you, if you need to, to catch an image. And you know, it, even if it's just something you're gonna share on social media uh, that you, know, you don't mind losing a little bit of the resolution for, you, know, you do have the ability to dial in almost what you want. Yeah, and, I mean, absolutely. And I mean, you know, the best way to zoom with your iPhone still is with your feet when you can. But you know, if, if, if you see Sasquatch riding a unicorn under a rainbow, you may need to zoom in a little bit and get the shot. Um, but the other thing we have again, we're back to that Topaz stuff, we can do that now and get that, that um, lower integrity file, but that looks good on, it'll always look good on social media and on the phone and on the internet. But when you wanna print, there's AI Gigapixel again, it will actually imagine what's supposed to be in the places where there aren't pixels and it, produces a result that's often better um, than that same image at the, at the smaller resolution size that you can print it at. So we just got options today and uh, zooming in is one of them with the, with the new phone too. We went to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Museum and rather than take this big camera in and everything and kind of you know, be kind of involved in trying to take pictures, I concentrated on using uh, the iPhone for the whole event and mm. then you know it was the, the software was able to make a, like an album I could share with everybody from uh, that trip and you know that's some of the new features even in the software here is when you're actually viewing the photos in the photo app you know you, you can uh, take a look at years months days and all photos and every now and then it pops up a special album for you if you want to share because it's just like making new presentations and it's all about you know, taking the images you create and sharing them, and, and you know, they make slideshows out of them and so forth. One of the things that I really love about this, though, is the search function. So I type the word Jeep in, and it immediately goes out and finds 218 photos of Jeeps. Wow, so, I mean, there's a lot of artificial intelligence kind of coming in here. You can also use Siri and just say, <laughs> hey Siri, show me all my images of pumpkins. And as long as you say, my images, Oh, sorry about that. That was Siri who just inter <laughs> yeah, inter interrupted our conversation. But um, as long as you say my images, Siri will go out and look. If you say just find me pumpkins, she'll look on the internet. But if you say find my images, uh, so I do this all the time. Show me my images of cars from Cuba. Show me my images of barns, my images of trees. It's great if you're trying to find an image quickly. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah, so I'll get my pumpkins. <laughs> anyway, but you can do that for fire trucks, leaves, um, rivers. I mean, it's... It's really very handy, specifically when you have over 88,000 images on your phone and you've got to search for things. 
Yeah, um, I, I checked that. I only have 45, Kevin. I've got some shooting to do to catch well, up. Well, we can week. catch up tomorrow when we go out shooting. One of the, the things that really uh, makes the power of these uh, phones work well are the apps you can buy. And you are the app master. Oh, thank you. you know, I, I've enjoyed doing that for a long time. I, my first phone was in uh, an iPhone 4 back in, I think, 29 or something like that. And uh, I didn't even know it had a camera in it. I was buying a phone. <laughs> Um, but it started, you know, with the apps that you can use for post-processing, that's where I have a lot of fun stylizing things and making them look like vintage or, or old images or, or doing multiple exposures in the camera. Um, and today we have apps like Lightroom for the phone, which allows us to not only um, record a raw image, so shoot raw, but process raw on the phone. It, it, it's a wonderful raw processor and it's, it's free uh, to those, well, if you subscribe, to the Creative Cloud, it's included. But even if you don't give up your hard-earned money every month, you can still get Lightroom for free on the phone. And it, it only lacks, it, it cuts you out of three tools that aren't inconsequential, really. Um, they don't have anything to do with um, processing RAW. So you can photograph RAW, process it on your phone, save the file to your camera roll as a JPEG after, and finish it off in Snapseed, which is another wonderful app that's free that uh, works on Androids and, and iPhones. So the apps today that we have are amazing. But I just did an article recently um, for PSA Journal that'll come out next year. It's, it was on old favorite apps. There's one that I've been using a lot lately for multiple exposures. It's nine years old and it's uh, it's the kludgiest, you know, um, app I've seen. Half of it, uh, the buttons don't work, but what needs to work works. It's called Average Cam Pro. And it allows you to take multiple exposures in the camera, uh, anywhere from one to 128 images with one shutter press. That's amazing and it, app. And it blends them together and you get these in incredible um, impressionistic looking images. Um, and I was inspired by, I don't know if you know Pep Ventosa. Yes. His work is amazing. And he does his exposures as near as I can tell with a larger camera, uh, a, a traditional camera. But the average Cam Pro app lets us get that very similar result um, with a with a really old app so well I, I don't use such an old app but I one of my favorite apps next to Snapseed which I think everybody in the world uses is Hydra and I enjoy Hydra because a lot of times I'm walking along a path and I've got moving water or waterfall or something like that and Hydra will actually take uh, once again kind of like that app a series of images and blend them together and, and then it takes the moving water and actually makes it look like you've had a one or two second exposure. Yeah. And uh, of just amazingly good quality. And then of course I'll take that in the Snapseed and then maybe take it somewhere else. And you know, through using a couple different apps that are my favorites, uh, you know, yeah. create something that's really nice. And then actually that one picture of which I did when I was in the Faroe Islands that way. Um, I was just thinking of that image, that black and white. That black and white image was my, my Ansel Adams God of Light image. Um, and, you know, of course, I duplicated the same image on my Sony, but with a little bit more effort because I actually had to take the long exposure. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, I had to go back in and do a number of things with the lighting to get to where I was. But, you know, I had accomplished pretty much in a matter of 10 yeah. minutes the image I wanted to create well, on my, my iPhone. Yeah. And one of the things that, that I've enjoyed about the iPhone, I mean, if you want to do a long exposure with a big camera, typically you need a tripod. If it's a bright day and you're trying to get a stream or a waterfall, you probably need a neutral density filter to keep too much light from getting in there. Um, so it's there's there's a lot of uh, effort involved in, in achieving that. With the iPhone, even with the native app, there's that live mode in here. It allows you to take an image with live mode on, and if it's an image of a, a waterfall or whatever, hand holding it, you can achieve a beautiful image of that soft water, um, and everything that's not moving in the image remains really tack sharp. So. It's just a, a really, it's really fun. Um, Hydra, the, the one you're talking about, I think that produces a 32 megapixel, 32 megapixel image. So image combined together, yes. Because it's, it's uh, sandwiching all yeah. those layers it's of images pixel together. Stitching and all. Yeah. Now, for me, what happens is I, I don't work as well in, on apps afterwards with the iPhone. And so I work in the iCloud infrastructure, meaning Anything I shoot on the iPhone goes up to the cloud and then comes down to all my other devices, my Macs, my uh, numerous iPads and different things like that. And then, you know, once I get the images on my iPad, I go through and edit them and select favorites. 
And then I can open those automatically in any one of my different apps and work on them and then save them. And then I can either share them with people. Um, I you know, can send them off to social media, uh, either Facebook and Instagram instantly. And I just find it's a lot easier. Plus, it makes it fun when I can use the Apple Pencil to do some of those adjustments, mm -hmm. specifically if I'm going to be uh, using like a content aware tool to get things moving or yeah, yeah. Uh, selecting an area that I want to blend in and drawing certain things. So I actually use uh, both of these in my, in my workflow uh, in, in, in working. Well, I don't usually, but I maybe should. I recently posted an image and um, I was, I was th thankfully I have friends who pointed this out. I left a tripod leg in the foreground of the image. I just didn't see it on the iPhone. So there's an advantage to having more real estate. It's a camera, okay? So I don't want to hear necessarily from a lot of people that it's not a camera. Well, I don't want to hear from a lot of people that it doesn't shoot raw. Like, it does shoot raw. So now this doesn't mean I discount my other cameras. And God only knows I've got a lot of them. Uh, this new iPhone has really got me excited. The images I'm creating from it, the prints that I've already made from it, and you know where it, and what we can do with it is is just a lot of fun. You've done something really cool recently. Uh, you're just showing me is uh, you're shooting vertical panoramas. Yeah, well, vertical panorama is something I've been doing for a long time with the, just the the wide angle previously on the phone. And it's basically, you know, with the, the, the panos, normally you move your phone in this direction and you get a landscape uh, type panorama. But you can also turn the phone this way and move up and get a panorama that, that, is, uh, that is vertical orientation. And I mean, I, I discovered that in Rome when I was photographing a lot of the cathedrals and things. You want to get the, the altar and the, sometimes the floor is like a, you know, parquet kind of floor. And then you got this incredible ceiling. Well, you can't fit that in one frame but you do a vertical pano and you get the whole thing and it's gorgeous. Well, I've, now that we have the wide angle lens, you can now do that same thing at, at, with 13 millimeter wide. I was out in the woods the other day with the color up in Lafayette and I did some vertical panos starting at the trunk of a tree and going up all the way and getting the, you know, the canopy of leaves at the top. I mean, they're really fun. Um, and I love it that, that you don't have to have attach a lens to, to get there. And, um, you just go switch to the wide angle and, and you're good to go. The, the other new feature on this phone is night mode. And I am telling you, I'm astounded by this. And now I'm like shooting anything I can in the dark just because I'm amazed at how well uh, this camera works that way. You know, at the normal lens, if you're you know, out in the middle of the streets where it's like dark or you're at a, a, a dinner and it's you know, candlelight only, uh, take the camera out, it automatically knows when it needs to do night mode and does the same thing. It shoots multiple images, stacks them all together, brings the exposure together, yep. and delivers a really fantastic image. Uh, scary good. Yeah, I, I, I've had experience the first time. The day I got my phone, it was uh, uh, my wife's son's birthday, and uh, we, she brought, carried a cake out. And we had all the lights off, in, in the, except for the cake, and the, the candlelight illuminated the two of them in the, in the room enough, and I was blown away that it was a, a night shot without any uh, additional help. It was just really does a nice job. It's it's a it's a fun time, and it's it's going to be fun to see where we go in the future with these. Um, you know, the iPhone 12, 13, 14, 15. Uh, who knows what they can do? And the amazing thing, they're doing it with tiny little sensors and lens arrays that are just this thick. I mean, I I don't know how they can put so many lenses together in such a thin. Thing so close to a sensor and accomplish uh, what they do, but you know, there's no question. Uh, you know, they're they're putting out some pretty pretty cool uh, things along the way. So that all of you that are getting into this realize the many different applications and things that can go with it. Uh, Rad not only writes articles for Photo PXL, which appear around once a month or so, but he also has a website where. He's done a lot of tutorials, both with the video and without, and all that information will be below in the additional information uh, for this video. Um, if you're interested in pursuing uh, different apps and learning a lot about the different ways you can edit your photos uh, in iPhoto and move them around and do things with them, uh, I suggest you know check those links out. Uh, Rad's a very patient and gentle teacher, uh, unlike <laughs> the harshness of myself when I do these things. I don't know about that. <laughs> And they're, they're very nice uh, things, but 
uh, I'm telling you, you know, photography should be fun. And we're at a, a, I would call, and although I've said this in the 80s too, oh, it's a golden age of photography, look at that. You know, we, we have an early autofocus. I mean, now we've got autofocus, we've got great tools, no matter what camera we buy. And the fact that we've got a camera in our pocket with the capabilities that it has, yeah. that we can see pictures instantly and share them everywhere is truly amazing. And one further note, uh, in the Raber household, we have um, an Epson, I believe it's a PM400 uh, printer attached to our network. And it's a tiny little printer that does four by six prints. And at any time, you know, if we find a cool print, Deborah or myself or even any guests that we have can, you know, go print, you know, the image and find that printer and push it out. And it, it pushes out the, the images and it sits downstairs in the basement. So it's completely accessible by the Wi-Fi network. And we're actually making prints, you know, that we stick in a basket that can sit on a table and at any time we can pull out and people can look at and share. And, That's really you know, fun. It's, yeah. it's all about that. It's, you know, because so many times, how many times do we just like pick the phone up and go, hey, Rad, I want to show you a cool picture and, uh, you know, take a look yeah. at that. And the next thing pumpkins. you know, <laughs> pumpkins are getting spread across the whole room. Um, by having prints and, and making prints of your favorite images, you know, yeah. everybody can be looking at a print at the same time. So it, it's pretty cool to do things that way. And uh, I'm enjoying that considerably, too. So... Um, what have you got to say about well, I, all this? I, it's been really fun doing this with you today, and um, thanks for plugging my uh, my videos and things. I have a YouTube channel where I have a lot of uh, I have a, a a series I call How I Did It because everybody was always asking me how how'd you do that. So I I got a trademark How I Did It. And the videos are out there; they're usually very short, um, but they focus on a specific topic, whether it's Lightroom or Snapseed or some other app. Um, so check them out; you might find some things that that you like and. Um, one thing I just heard you say that really resonates for me, photography is about fun. If it gets to the point where it's not fun for you, then you got to do some changes. And I, you know, I've been playing with this little phone here since 20, well, I've been doing photography since I was a kid, but the phone in 2010 or 29, and it just keeps getting better and more fun. And that's, yeah. the, that's the operative word there. So it, it is the operative word. And what's really pretty cool about that um, is the fact that while we're having fun, we can sit in the doctor's office or, you know, anytime we're still and waiting and, uh, you know, just work on our images. You know, my, my parents are gone now. Um, I know you lost your mother not long ago. And, you know, there were times where I was, my dad was in a rehab center or places where you're not going to walk into one of those places with your DSLR camera. Oh, no. But there were some incredibly intimate moments that I was able to capture because I had my iPhone with me. It's, it's so tender moments. Be, being able to, to, to be, you know, have, I cherish those images today. Um, and so it, it's really a, a good tool to be able to take into places where big cameras either not allowed or not appropriate or whatever. So. I'm gonna ask before we close here for my prop girl to please bring in the, my basket of photographs. This is a little basket that <clears throat> can sit on our table, you know, right next to the napkin stand. And, you know, we can pull these. So I can images. send an image right now to that camera printer and, ha and print a picture. Sure can. Oh. And, you know, okay, so um, here's a ham and cheese sandwich. <laughs> uh, my, here's a trip to uh, uh, my favorite pancake house in New England. Uh, some pictures of my sons. This is always a great shot. Me and my boys when we were younger, oh my gosh. Uh, going paintballing. I take it that wasn't taken with an iPhone, but we printed it uh, we, from Well, <laughs> I eventually went into my album because yeah, yeah, I yeah. imported it into my iPhotos album. And but the the coolness is, it's you know we have all these images, you know that we make as four by sixes, and you know they just kind of sit on the the table, yeah. and it, it, we can pass them around anytime we want. The printer's cheap, it comes with paper and you know all the ink you need to do it, and it uh, hooks up to your network and you can push a button and make prints instantly. Don't discount the fact that this is a camera. It is, it's a very capable camera. Uh, it can be a Polaroid uh, for your big cameras. For my Sony cameras, it actually uh, connects wirelessly. So as I'm shooting pictures with my Sony a7R IV, yeah. Those images come down here and I can do serious evaluation, send them over to my uh, photo album and then share them well, if in, I would in like. In addition to, I do this with my, my Fuji. You can take your raw files that you photograph with your big camera, to, to save them here and process them in Lightroom or Snapseed or whatever. 
um, or with one of the raw processing tools that we talked about. So if I'm flying or traveling and I don't want to get out my computer on the plane, I'll have to make sure I have those files transferred to my phone or it's a Bluetooth uh, thing. And I do my processing on the iPhone of my big images. So it's really versatile. And it's versatile and it's also a tool for many of your cameras. It can be a remote for your camera. It can trigger different things. You can use it with a number of different triggering apps. Uh, uh, work it as an intervalometer for your camera that automatically triggers the camera at certain times. Anyway, the, it's mm -hmm. just amazing. There's a lot of connectivities, a lot of fun stuff, and uh, we're having a blast with it. Video-wise, still-wise, this is a great tool. In closing, I'd like to say thanks for watching. Thanks for being part of PhotoPXL. If you've liked this video, don't forget to ring the bell and subscribe so that you're notified of new videos as they come, and we could use uh, more subscribers. So please take a moment and check off the subscription box and become part of this family. And don't forget to visit photopxl.com. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Kevin. This was really fun. Thanks a lot. Good job, man.